Magallanes, can you please call roll? Chair Henderson. Here. Vice Chair Elise. Appears to be absent. You will be about 15 minutes late. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Lujan. Absent. And Commissioner Olivares. Present. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Clerk Magallanes, um, would you like to play the public comment code of conduct? Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? The meeting of this body is now in order. A code of conduct will now be read, and we request that you comply with it to ensure the efficient administration of the meeting. Members of the public, it is your right to participate in today's meeting, and this meeting body encourages such participation. However, the right of the public to address the body must be balanced with the need to ensure that public comment does not interfere with the orderly course of this body's business. All are reminded to abide by the following rules. Speakers must cease speaking immediately when their time has ended. Public comment on agenda items must relate to the subject matter of that item. General public comment is limited to subjects within the jurisdiction of the body. Public comment does not include the right to engage in a dialogue with members of this body or staff. Please remain respectful of the forum and refrain from uttering, writing, or displaying profane, personal, threatening, derogatory, demeaning, or other abusive statements towards the members of this body, staff, or any other person. Members of the audience should be respectful of the views expressed by speakers, staff, and members of this meeting body and may not excessively clap, cheer, whistle, or otherwise disrupt the orderly conduct of the meeting. Any person engaging in conduct that disrupts the meeting is subject to being removed from the meeting. Finally, if you witness conduct or behavior by other members of the public that disrupts your ability to remain engaged or participate in this meeting, please notify city staff. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Can I please get everybody to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. Okay, public comments. Now is the time for public participation on items listed on the consent calendar items. Each speaker is allotted two minutes in total if they wish to speak on the consent calendar. Clerk Bagayanis, do you have any speaker cards for the consent calendar? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, um, then can I uh, please get a motion from the commissioners? Can we announce the cards where they're at? Pardon? The cards where to speak. Oh, um, so if people would like to speak on agenda items, there's some cards in the back um, in the ante room. Fill out the cards um, and uh, hand them to the city clerk and you'll, um, for whatever agenda item you'd like to speak about. Okay, commissioners, would you like to pull any items from the consent calendar? If not, can I get a motion to approve? Okay, so I have a motion from uh, Commissioner Oliveras. Second. And a second from Commissioner Jones. All in favor, please. Do we want to do electronic or voice? Um, for item 5A, 5A. You, would, you would just do a voice vote. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes with three yes votes or aye votes. Okay. Public hearings. Clerk Magallanes, please read the item title for the record for 6A. Item 6A, adopt resolution number PC 2024-018, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Palmdale approving conditional use permit 23-0020, an application to establish a large residential care facility located at 4036 Tournament Drive and find that the project is categorically exempt from environmental review. 
Okay, we have a staff presentation from Planner uh, Magana. Good evening, commissioners. The item before you is a conditional use permit to establish a large residential care facility located at 4036 Tournament Drive. The residence is currently operating as a small residential care facility with six residents, which is permitted within the specific plan and the state of California. The large residential care facility that is um, being requested tonight will allow up to nine. Uh, staff and the applicant are available for any questions. Okay, so are we going to um, open the public hearing first Correct. for just the public? Correct. Okay. So, uh, speaker cards, do we have speaker cards? We do have speaker cards on this item. Alexis Brucing. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Alexis Brucing. I live next door um, from this facility at 4036 Tournament Drive. My family and I have been living at our house for over 15 years. We purchased our house in our neighborhood due to it being quiet, close to good schools, and it seemed like a place where we could raise our children. A few years ago, the house next door to us was purchased and converted to an elderly care facility. Since the patients were placed inside the converted house, our quiet neighborhood was turned upside down. We have had medical waste, soil diaper, diapers, pads with urine and feces, gloves, etc., placed in our trash can without permission. On trash days, coupled with it being windy, medical waste has been blown onto our front yard, on the street, and onto and into our neighbor's yards. While my husband has been working in the garage, he has heard patients screaming for help. He thought it was our daughter who may have been hurt one day. He ran into the house, but it wasn't my daughter. He realized he heard these patients screaming in agony throughout all hours of the night next door. There are times when the weather is nice and we sleep with the windows open. Then we have to close the windows due to the patient's screams because it's just not comfortable for us to sleep with our children at night. Many strangers and our workers show up throughout the day when myself or my family members are outside. These strangers stare at us and never say hi or smile. On the weekends, people from all over arrive at the converted house and visit their sick family members. These people park, blocking our driveway, stare at us, and have no respect for our property or neighborhood. Our regular neighbors are so friendly. They say hi, they wave, they smile, we have conversations outside whenever they see us, and this is not the case with all the workers at the facility. There have been at least 10 times we know of that Los Angeles County Fire Department vehicles and personnel have showed up at our, all hours of the day and night the lights and sounds have woken us up in the middle of the night. The emergency vehicles have blocked our driveway. I understand they need the space, but it prevents us from leaving during the day if we have to run errands like a normal family would. Again, with wanting to sleep with the windows open when the weather is nice, we have to shut our windows when the emergency vehicles arrive next door. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office has showed up numerous times and have had to stay in front of the house for periods of time. Workers that are at the house for long periods of time bring their dogs to work with them. Some dogs are left in the backyard all day barking, and another dog was left in the garage with whining for hours on end one day. The reason I am bringing all these issues up to you tonight. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay, next speaker. Okay, so next speaker, N Nyla. I'm not sure if you're um, here to speak on tournament or brace us. Okay. presentation. Um, I live in the same housing tract. We've been there for three years, my husband and I. We are retired. And even though I don't live next door to this house, I am a retired RN. I worked for Providence Holy Cross for 10 years. And people do get sick, and the elderly uh, especially. And there is not too far from me. In fact, our house tees into a house that will be converted into this same type of facility, I would not appreciate sirens, you know, various times of the day or night. Um, this is actually a business. They're making big time money off of this. But should it jeopardize the rights of people that live in a neighborhood? We pay $8,000 in property taxes. And the idea of, because it could happen to us, like I said, it's right down the street, that we're laying on our bed, there's sirens, okay? Or people that we don't know, or people with dogs that are barking continually. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration before approving something. We did 
you know, just like these people, nobody wants to live in a residential area that is basically a business establishment. That is not right. And so I noticed that they've already had six people. They're extending it to nine. Shouldn't there be a cutoff at some point? I don't even know why the six was approved. So I almost feel like I'm here because things, even though things are already considered, but to up it to nine, that's even going to be more strangers coming in, more nurses. And don't get me wrong, I'm respectful of nurses. But at some point in time, that's a lot of traffic. That's a lot of, when I, I happened to go past, I was looking at the sign. And while I was there, there was two cars in the driveway. There was a nurse coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next speaker. Next speaker, we have the applicant, Mr. Vikas. Do we have any other speakers on the item before yeah, the before applicant? The applicant. I For item 6A. 6A. This is for 6A for a large right. residential care facility on Tournament Drive. Okay, so I have Ar Arnold Arias. Okay, so that's on Tournament. Hi, um, good, afternoon. good afternoon. My name is Arnold Arias, and I live like right across from the residence uh, that they want to expand. And so far, everything that I've seen, and I'm not opposed to, you know, people growing their businesses. I just don't think that a residential area is the proper place for it. We've had, when they have incidents, we've had numerous fire trucks, ambulances, sheriffs they're right there trying to pick up a patient it's a hospice and unfortunately when that person does not make it then we have the coroner there there's been times when i can't even get into my own place because the trucks are blocking so you know quite frankly to me it kind of impacts me depending on what time it is because this can happen any time of the day i work from home so i'm constantly there i'm seeing the traffic i've brought up um actually issues because the nurses sometimes just walk out and they just throw the masks on the floor, which that's the minimum, you know, that's the least amount of things, you know, just the trash. But I do think that all the traffic, the way it impacts, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's burdensome at one point. So, and again, I'm not against business growing. I just don't think that this is the proper place for it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other speakers for tournament? 6A? I do not. Okay. All right. So then we'll take um, the applicant. Come on up. Come on up and um, maybe uh, answer the um, concerns of the neighbors. Uh, we've got um, medical waste, loud screaming, dogs barking, um, emergency vehicles. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so as far as uh, if you say it is a business, uh, I don't know how we can say business because the patients we have, six patients, four of them are from the neighborhood. And we have the applications from the neighborhood who are willing to come, who want to stay there because their children can come and visit them quickly. And uh, as far as uh, uh, the based thing, when we established it last year, at that time, uh, it, we, uh, we confirmed with waste management. They, they uh, cleaned it out. We ordered the new bins, and after that, it was all cleaned up. As far as parking, uh, all the residents in the facility, they don't have the cars. So all the residents are without car. We have only one or two cars, and three parking slots are already there in the facility. And ambulance, it, uh, it came, so it, it doesn't uh, mean that uh, if, if some resident is staying there, if we will put them out from the community or outside, uh, wherever they go, it is very difficult for them. 
and ambulance can come to any house. It is not like that this facility gets the ambulance. And as far as the dogs barking, we don't have the dogs. It is neighbor's dogs. So they are barking. I don't know, but what but can we do with the barking dogs? So we have to, uh, uh, as the need for our uh, old population is growing, uh, it, is, it was a, I am a physician by profession, and uh, it is not a business. It is like a, from the heart coming out that how to take care of the situation. Many, many patients who are in with us, they are paid by the Medicare or Medical. They cannot even afford housing. It's very difficult. If you will put all these six patients into a six different houses, it becomes a full neighborhood. So it, it is a contained situation where we want to put uh, these patients, help them so that when we are in the that age group, at least we have a place where our children can visit, we can be taken care of. It is not like uh, just a business. If we, if we need to do business, there are many other ways to do the business. But this is just to, uh, as per the need, we were looking if we can expand it to add one or two more patients, not for that uh, to disturb the neighborhood, to help the neighborhood. It will give us two or three other jobs and there are two or three people who can go there and work, uh, and at the same time they can live uh, live in their uh, neighborhood area. So it it is not uh, like we are doing a business model here. It is just to help each other in the neighborhood, not uh, not from the point of view like we want to disturb intentionally to somebody. And uh, when the uh, when when the people who like it is the most people who like they live around. They don't want to go far. They don't want to go to hospital. And post-operative care, when we patients come, they we take care of them for one month or two weeks or three weeks. That helps them. So I don't know. We don't have many hospitals in the Palmdale and Lancaster area. It is, it is not that... Uh, uh, it's very difficult if everybody will start going to LA and get the care. Uh, we don't have very large facilities here. And even in the neighborhood, we have a, in front of Balmort a large facility. And many patients, they don't want to stay there. They want to stay. They feel like we are in the hospital. The people or uh, elderly, they want uh, retired veterans. They want to stay in a house-like environment. And uh, they, don't, they don't even walk. They don't even go out. They are staying inside. I don't know what is the difficulty for somebody else. It a, it's a, uh, means they are bed-bound mostly. Uh, they don't scream on anybody. And if the nurses are not smiling, because of that, we cannot stop taking care of the other people in our community. And uh, uh, this, this all is happening. Uh, uh, because it was our intention. My partner, who is a nurse by, uh, by profession, we were thinking it is the best uh, to say it uh, the, if we can take care of somebody. It was uh, not to disturb somebody. It is just intentional that if the, we can grow in the same neighborhood and uh, the, the second application you have it for the other house, I live in front of that house, and uh, it is it is not that uh, I am willing to. Uh, it my my feeling is my daughter came in today, just when well, like I am already forty five, and after ten or twenty years I need a place, and I should be living some in L A. Uh, where you will put me? Like t even if you will think about me, uh, where I will stay uh, in the in the situation. Now, that on, is my response. as they um, talk about um, the the trash and the wind comes and blows it down the street, I mean, th this is medical waste, isn't? Isn't yeah, there a, a different way that you're supposed to treat it in a different kind of a, a, a barrel? Yes, sir. And yeah. with a lid or whatever that's supposed to keep that from coming out. I know when, at the hospital they have a totally separate place to put all that into. Yeah, th that we will 100 percent make sure that there will not be even a single mask. We will make sure our bins are covered or we will order the large ones. Uh, we do have it 
but I think these are the plastic. The lid may open sometimes, but we are making sure that medical waste is not going into these trash bins. Medical dose. And uh, as far as the parking uh, and the trash, the both are, I'm thinking, even if you can do the survey now, you can go in both properties. There is not even a single car in front of our own back, uh, in front yard. So we have a three or four parking slots. And the trash, we can start keeping inside rather than bringing front, or, the, or we will bring it only when the trash is picked up. And we will make sure they are uh, heavy lead trash bins. And uh, uh, the loose items, we don't want to throw it. And it, we will be, we will be, we are monitored by the State Department as well. We can't throw these things like this. If one or two trash masks uh, goes out, uh, it is not to disturb the neighbors. Uh, it is uh, with respect, like it is a, a genuine mistake if the mask goes out. We don't want to, we want, we will take care of that 100%. I have a question. So have you guys already ordered the biohazard bins? Yes, ma'am. Or you we, have just the regular trash can bins? No, we have the biohazard, 100%. Okay. All the sharps and all the... But the mask, sometimes it comes out, it flies out. Okay. Uh, but you will uh, never see a blood-tinged uh, based material or any diaper or any other. We contain them and use the special bins we have. Got it. Yes. And then what I'm hearing from you, most of your patients or clients, they lived in the neighborhood already? Absolutely, absolutely. And yes. so they just don't want to leave the neighborhood. They want to be around familiar settings. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is. Even if you will think about our own parents, and my, my parents or my grandparents, so even you think like you want to look a place, mm -hmm. you want like if it is possible nearby. And even if you see in that neighborhood, we don't have many uh, places to put. And there is a high need, and we can't construct a special building for this. Uh, for Got it. it. And we did uh, increase the space over there to, to according to the compliance. So you say there's no dogs in this facility? No, we don't have the dogs. There's no dogs. We sir, we, we cannot, a uh, patient and <laughs> we okay. can't do I'm that. I'm just saying, sir. there was dog barking, yeah. um, screaming. Sir, screaming, uh, if one or two times they may have heard it, I cannot, uh, like, there is no confirmation of these things. If our patient screamed one time, then it can happen in my own neighborhood as well. If the patient has herpes, he can scream anyway. And my neighbor can have the herpes as well. It is, it is not that uh, uh, we have, we don't have any uh, special uh, patients on the special drug control program. They are the one who fights. These are our regular elder patients. It means two of them are veterans. So it is not that, uh, no, they, they don't want to scream. If I, the Your patient... cutoff is, is nine. Nine, <laughs> yes, nine beds? Yes, nine. So cut off, the cutoff is nine. Yes. And then uh, what, what's the frequency of the emergency vehicles? Frequency is when we established at that time, six patients came last year. Then you can see, oh, ambulance came, this and that. But after that, we don't have that many emergency. Maybe once in a while, if it is a very crashing patient. Otherwise, we have to transport by the genuine way. That is another intention we have, that if we can cut down on the 911 call. So if we don't want to call them. It's once in a while. It is not happening every day. Yep, come. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole. I'm the um, partner of Dr. Jindal, who um, helps run the facility. Um, so I want to just make a comment about the emergency vehicles, because a lot of our patients are, um, a lot of them sometimes can be like hospice patients. So that even eliminates the amount of emergency vehicles that we um, call into the facilities. Because if they're on hospice, we would just call like the hospice nurses to come and see the patients. And even when they pass away, the hospice um, company will just take care of the patient and like, um, you know, take care of the patient even when they pass away, you know, the emergency uh, vehicles don't have to come. Um, so that's, and as Dr. Jindal said, um, we try to rarely, you know, obviously, you know, there are going to be 
um, emergencies, but it's very rare that we try to, you know, call 911, you know, if, if it's a really, like, a true emergency. Like, even sometimes for, like, a minor fall, we don't even, you know, call. We just make sure, like, they're okay and they're secure, and then we just report it to community care licensing because we are uh, mandated by the state to uh, report everything that happens in the facility. Um, so, yeah, in regards to that um, emergency vehicles and, you know, with the hospice patients mm -hmm. we have, um, we are approved by the state to have three hospice patients at one time out of the six patients. So the state is very aware that, you know, the amount of hospice patients we can have at one time. Um, another thing I want to mention is that, um, <clears throat> just like as he said, we only have a couple of really large facilities in our community. So um, there is a, a really big need for people who have, like, a certain set income to be in our homes because, and, and the state is very aware of this, they're even pushing, not pushing, but very recommending um, people like us to apply to something called the Assisted Living Waiver Program that even helps more patients come into facilities like, like ours. So there is a real need um, for, because with the larger facilities, they charge a lot of money. And if you do have higher care needs, they like, um, I don't know the name, uh, Palm Vista Palm is the one across yes. from the closest Walmart yeah. to Tournament Drive. Um, and a lot of the patients will go there and they're not accepted because they have very high care needs or the, the rates can start anywhere from 5000 6000 above and that's something that a lot of the families in the community can't afford. So our homes are the only ones that they can go to and a lot of the hospitals really call us to help the, you know, the elderly population in our community. So that's, you know, kind of like what we're here for. Um, and, you know, we're really not here to try to disturb our neighbors. We, you know, we're very um, amenable to working. If you do see something, we'll, you know, correct it. We're not there to, like, disturb yeah. anybody. And, uh, uh, sir and madam, uh, from the business uh, point of view, one of our neighbors uh, feel like uh, business. <laughs> it is not a big business. We, on the six patients, we are even breaking means if we have no patient or six patients, maybe two or three hundred dollar we are saving per patient. So if we have five patients, we are losing money. And if we will get three more, it will be affordable. It will be possible to do it. Uh, it is not a huge. Even if you will look at our books, it is not a huge business. But yes, there is a legacy. If it is possible we will be able to handle it and we can help uh, help the situation. Okay, so um, again, so I, I think you were, you were saying that you, you've met with waste management and you've um, discussed doing yeah. something about the, the trash. Yes, sir. Um, obviously, you need more trash for more people. Yes, sir. Um, you need more secure uh, bins. Secure bins. Yeah. Um, and they all need to be wherever, in the backyard, the garage, whatever. Yes, not in the front. Until it's time to pick that up. Locked bins. Locked bins, no, no, whatever. Actually, you know, close them so they can't open because this is not the kind of stuff you want flowing down the street. Absolutely, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and is that in our, our conditions of approval? Anything about trash and the conditions of approval? Correct. So we do have conditions of approval that uh, do speak to any upkeep of the property, making sure that property maintenance is always taken care of. And uh, just a reminder for everyone, we are a complaint-driven code enforcement, and we do now have the My Palm Bell app. I would encourage anybody to download it and report any of these things um, because with the CUP process, if we do go ahead and approve this tonight, there is also a way to revoke a CUP if somebody is operating outside of what they're allowed to do. So there are some options here for, for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Got okay. Um, any other questions from commissioners? Yes. <coughs> well, the we can't. I'm sorry. You already, we can only do the so many minutes per person. Um, but we 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 noted we noted your um, concerns. Um, anyways, okay. So no more discussion. No more um, uh, questions. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Commissioners, any further discussion? Uh, would anybody like to make a motion and a second? We have before, before we make a motion in a second, I do want to note for the record that Jetro, um, Commissioner Elise, is here now, and uh, he will not be voting on this item since he was not here for the hearing. Okay. Commissioner Jetro Elise has joined us on the dais, but will not be participating in item 6A. 
Okay. Uh, just so knowledge for the public, so the commission has the opportunity to ask applicant questions regarding the concerns that were brought up. So that does take some time as there are four speakers. So he was answering all those questions. So the thing is, it's going from six to nine. People want it to stop at the six, okay? Okay. Commissioners? Second? I motion. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Jones, a second from Commissioner Oliveras. Um, please show your vote. So what is your motion? Can you speak your motion? Uh, motion to approve um, staff's recommendation on item 6A. Got a motion and a second. Please show your vote. Let the record show motion passes with three yes votes. So the motion doesn't come from the board? No. It comes from you. Correct. Well, the motion comes from the commission. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Can I speak for a second? So, Sir, so just the, for the, the record, we don't closed. go back and forth with you guys. The public hearing is closed. Yes. Correct. Thank you. So. There is an appeals process. You can appeal to the city council. Okay, we move on to item 6B. Um, Clerk Magallanes, can you please read the title for the record? Item 6B, adopt resolution number PC-2024-020, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Palmdale approving conditional use permit 23-0021, an application to establish a large residential facility located at 5542 Las Brisas Terrace and find that the project is categorically exempt from environmental review. Okay, um, do we have speaker slips? I'll go ahead and open. Oh, staff presentation. Can I get staff you, presentation? You from do have the ability to waive the staff report, or I can give a quick update, but it's the same thing as the previous item. Okay, all right, so um, that's the uh, report from uh, planner manager uh, Magania, same report. Um, do we have speaker cards? I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Do we have speakers for this? Yes, I do have one speaker card. Okay. I have Mark Mitchell. Okay, Mr. Please Mitchell. Come up to the podium. Hey, good evening. Good evening. I'm, uh, Mark Mitchell. This is actually my first time to a council meeting, so thank you for actually having me. I wasn't actually planning on speaking. I actually just wanted to come and actually hear from the current residents. Um, I actually live in the neighborhood. Um, my mom recently had her, um, well, my dad actually passed my stepdad. So she actually moved in with us. So this kind of issue concerns me. You know, just housing is a big issue right now. And I saw the basically the big posting in the lawn. Um, it's, I guess, currently at six. It's the applications for 10. Um, I, and I'm just kind of curious what the current residents, and I guess I'm the only one who's come tonight. I'm just curious what they have to say, you know. Uh, yeah. Are you That's, talking about the residents in the facility itself? Correct, yeah. Oh, yeah. whether they like being there? Well, no, just, it, you know, having that additional for that space. Oh, I oh guess. got it, got yeah. it. So, yeah. like, they, you know, they, they don't want filling up the place. 
Yeah, you got yeah, to, yeah. Or do, or do. Are they going to have more friends? Well, no, two or three per room. You know, how, right. how does that work? You know, it's, okay. housing's a big, big issue. So I just, I was just curious. All right. So, so okay, we'll ask that. Um, okay. Any other issues or concerns? Uh, no, nope, you'd like the applicant to address. Wanted, just wanted to get more information. So. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Right, I appreciate you coming. Time. Okay. Um, any other speakers other than the applicant? I do not have any more speakers on this item. Okay. Um, would the applicant like to come up and answer the question about what the current residents feel about adding some new friends to the house? Yes, sir. Uh, so we, we have not asked any that question to the residents. Uh, ah. And they are already, their rooms are there. Uh, the one which we are putting two or three extra patients, that is we have extra space, big space, and uh, those three patients will go there. And uh, one of the staff, uh, the staff which is using that room, we will use that room for the patient, and staff is moving on the other side. So uh, the patient, uh, the, the one which we already committed to them, they will stay in the same place, same, same, uh, same situation. They, um, we have uh, three patients, uh, three, uh, uh, one master bedroom has two patients, husband and wife, and uh, the others are the single rooms. And this is a five bedroom house, which has a extra space for the three other patients. Okay. So, so and uh, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. And uh, just to be on that, uh, means I, I didn't know that he is uh, coming or uh, he is uh, commenting on us. Uh, means it is just from the public. That is what I was saying in the beginning that they, they want us, uh, the, the, all, the, all the families, uh, they, they feel like if they are in the neighborhood, that is like you don't need to go in the hospital or something. If my, means my main intention is um, my parents, <laughs> uh, I, I live in front of this house, sir. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, my parents, uh, uh, they are now, they are in a good situation. But I was just thinking, like, uh, if this stage comes, then at least I will be able to help them and see them, okay. and uh, at the same okay. same for our other. I got gotcha. you. Comment on like the families, the families at um, um, more specifically, like all our residents. But at this resident, they're very, very like uh, you could speak to any of the families that currently reside at that resident, and they're extremely happy about you know the the cur the conditions of their parents and. Um, you know, we're just taking great care of them. So, you know, I'm, uh, I would, if, you know, if you would like to, you can always like, okay, um, well, the, the families would be very well. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Mitchell had a great question. Just so Nobody ever know. asked the people living in the <laughs> facility. Thank so you, you might want to ask them, thank Hey, what do you thank think? You. Thank <laughs> you. And See what uh, they say. The, just, uh, I mean, the, she is uh, managing the patients, uh, and, uh, the beauty is she is so good. We have patient from the last two years, three, two or three patients means, means they don't, they don't want to leave us. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, but, yeah. That, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, we'll go ahead and finish up there, and then, um, okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Commissioners, any discussion? Any questions? Do, we a want to, do you have a speaker card? Uh, I didn't get a speaker. Oh. Okay. Uh, we'll get your name after, but you can get two minutes. Okay. Or did we already close the public? We closed the public hearing. Do we want to reopen the public hearing? We can, we can open the public comment if we would like. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll reopen the public hearing. You're supposed to have a, a speaker slip, but um, come on up. you got two minutes to um, talk. I just want to say that... Um, excuse me, sir. Can you just please state your name? Oh, Larry Mikhail. I'm sorry? Uh, Mikhail Larry. Mikhail. Uh, M-E-K-H-A-I-L. And okay. I, I believe I'm next door to the gentleman right there. Okay, thank and, you. And he lives up right across the street from me. Uh, I want to say that I lived uh, through this uh, before in West L.A., and, and uh, I saw we saw hell, the neighbors, from this. Uh, we saw... Um, People fighting, pulling hair, a uh, lot of broken windows. Uh, we saw uh, uh, there when they're walking, their eyes are up and their hair is uh, really crazy. And we were all afraid and we had children. 
with all the families had you know little kids and and it was it was a nightmare for us. Uh, Those were hospice senior facilities you're talking about? Yes. Hospice senior. Facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. We all know the term hospice. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I know exactly. What okay. It is. All we right. Saw, I just want to make sure, please. And I'm. He's a, he lives across the street from me. Oh. And the house is only a one uh, one, one uh, house down from me. I I so gotcha. It, okay. It was, it was scary. Thank I appreciate you. your comments, Mr. McHale. Okay. Um, all right. We'll go ahead and reclose the public hearing. And um, discussion? Any discussion from commissioners? Questions? Concerns? I don't know. Nope. They said hospice and that. Means okay. Um, okay. <laughs> commissioners, can I get a motion and a second um, to adopt item 6A? Motion. Okay. Second. 6B. B, actually. Okay, so I got a uh, motion you from... You said 6B. You said 6B. Oh, I'm sorry, 6B. Yes. 6B, I'm sorry. 6B. It's on the same page. Sorry about that. Um, 6B. Um, okay, I had a motion from uh, Vice Chair Elise and a second from Commissioner Jones. Please show your vote. Let, oh, let the record show. Item pass with four guest votes. That was? <laughs> I thought I saw it. Okay. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> All right, we're on to uh, item 6C. Clerk Magallanes, can you please read the title for the record? Okay, we have item 6C, adopt resolution number PC 2024-022, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Palmdale, approving conditional use permit 23-0023, a request to establish an adult vocational facility within an existing building, 10,000 square foot building, located at 38626 9th Street East, and find that the project is categorically exempt from environmental review. Okay, staff presentation from planning manager Brenda Magana. All right, so item 6C is a CUP submitted on behalf of Advancing Communities Together. Uh, this is to, re to establish an adult vocational facility within a portion of an existing building located at 38626 9th Street East. The facility includes four training rooms and office space that support education and vocational services, and it will operate from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, staff and myself are here to answer any questions. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Do we have any speaker slips for... Item 6C. We do not have any speaker slips for this item. Okie dokie. Um, we have an applicant. Uh, nope. Applicant. No? Okay. All right, then I guess we'll close the public hearing. And commissioners, any discussion? No. Okay, commissioners, can I have a motion and a second? Question. Oh, back up. Okay. Um, can we can we define the term vocational? What exactly is just a learning facility for for adults? A learning facility for adults. So this is um, out of high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. eighteen and over. Okay. So like a GED type program or. The intention really is to have more skill based and gotcha. also if, uh, offer a GED program if they have enough applicants at that time. But really, it's to. Uh, it'll be determined on how many applications they get and how many people they get attending. Do they know? Uh, do they have an expectation of what numbers, like, like what are their their, their uh, enrollment size is going to be? Not at this time. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay, commissioners, can I get a motion and a second to adopt item six C? Motion. Second. Okay, I got a motion from Commissioner Olivares, a second from Vice Chair Elise. Please show your vote. From um, a motion from Commissioner Olivares and a second from Vice Chair Elise. Okay. And, okay. And you can start voting.
Let the record show, motion passes with four yes votes. Okay, item 6D, um, Clerk Magallanes, please read the item title for the record. Item 6D, adopt resolution number PC 2024-021, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Palmdale approving conditional use permit 03-05, major modification number one, an application to construct a park and ride facility on approximately 15 acres at an existing Marie Kerr Park located at the northwest corner of Rancho Vista Boulevard and 25th Street West, and adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting program prepared for the project. Okie dokie. Staff presentation by Planning Manager Brenda Magana. Right. All right. Here we go. So the item before you is a conditional use permit, major modification to the existing park, Marie Kerr Park. The request is for the construction of a new park and ride facility located at the northwest corner of Rancho Vista Boulevard and 25th Street West. The park and ride facility will replace the existing compacted, crushed, recycled asphalt that has been historically used as overflow parking for the park. The, propo the proposal includes the installation of asphalt paving, ADA upgrades, lighting, parking lot landscaping, parking lot landscaping along 25th Street West, and adjacent offsite improvements such as street paving, sidewalk, curb and gutters. The project will also continue to provide overflow parking for the park events, providing the location with future installation of digital government advertising signs, remove and replace the existing government sign for Marie Kerr Park, and it'll also construct an infiltration basin. This will also provide location for future pump station and accommodate the use of a parking lot for seasonal outdoor movie theater. The property lo is located on the north side of Rancho Vista Boulevard, bounded by 30th Street West to the west, West Avenue 012 to the north, and 25th Street West to the east. On the screen here, you'll see that there is a long list of improvements that will be done to the site. Uh, I do want to point out that the outdoor movie nights um, is something that Parks and Rec is looking to to implement, however, that would require a minor use permit, so that would come back before administratively, and we would provide conditions of approval, such as lighting, noise, and uh, all those kinds of concerns that might come from the outdoor movie theater. With that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt resolution number PC 2024-021. City staff are here to answer any questions. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, open the public hearing. Would it be helpful if I put the list of improvements back? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and Clerk Magallanes, you have um, speaker slips and or any other um, items from the public? So um, I believe you were just handed a petition, and I'm not sure how... Um, we should handle that as that was not distributed to everybody. You can keep it and make copies and keep it available at the city. Is there only one copy that is intended for everyone to share, I suppose? Um, but yeah, we should keep a copy for a public record uh, in the event someone wants it in the future. Okay, so I will keep it in the record. Um, and yes, we do have speaker slips for this item. Okie dokie. Uh, why don't we go ahead and... Um, um, I recommend that yeah. we at least call the first three people up so they could kind of get in line and... You know, okay, so um, I will call as in the order that I received. Um, I have a Indirigit. Indir can, we, can we put ourselves first? So Joseph first. Um, okay, so I'm... I'm doing them in the order that they were received. So I have, I received indirects first. Can we please have it reordered? What is your name, ma'am? My name is Diana Hong. And I, I was asking, can we reorder? We didn't know we were going to get called on the order we gave it to you. Can we please have Joseph go first? 
We can have Joseph go first, and okay. then after that, we will go in the order that they were received. Okay, let me get to Joseph's so I can call him by name. So you, you're St. Joseph? Did you fill that out? What was the name on your call? Hopset. Okay, so go ahead. Yes, you can, you can come up. And start the timer whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. So we, we collectively oppose. I mean, I'm I'm presenting the the, the community. Um, we collectively oppose the park and ride project adopted by city council project that also includes water pump and its building infiltrating uh, infiltrating basin, movie theater, screen, and light installation. We oppose this project because it has an adverse impact on the environment, such as traffic, air pollution, green gas emission, noise impact light glare public safety, construction impact, attraction of pests, mosquitoes, and other insects. Um, it also may affect adjacent residential and land use and cause land use imp impacts. Now, we have too many pictures that they're going to continue doing the same thing. This is a sewage and always is on. And they're talking about mosquitoes or running. It's not going to impact. They're not, they're not doing anything. There is no project study by professionals, only people inside everything is okay, and they check it out. Do I have evidence? Yes, I do. So um, it was circulating in the, in the, in, in, uh, uh, give me a second, communications, in the, there is communication that is, was attached here uh, in the city recent documentation that they exhibit the letter petition along with police reports or F evidence. Attached document include email communication between the city staff that they are admitting that there is no MND that analyzes the pump station and also the city staff in 2024. Mentions, uh, mentions that the traffic impacts were not even addressed. And also in 2022, the city was an, on the notice of the proposed pump station at the location. The city has... Uh, Authority to move that pump station to a different site. On so, sorry. I mean, some other people, they got more. Let me finish it, and then you decide. The they, next speaker, please. They can, they can, they can finish for you. So uh, hand it to them, and they, they can use their two, two minutes. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Uh, actually, I live just... What's your name, uh, sir? Oh, my name is Indaji Dillon, and I'm 2747-012 Palm. Indaji? Indaji Dillon, D-H-I-L-L-O-N. Okay. And actually, I just came to know about this one about uh, two hours ago, because I never received any kind of notification or any kind of survey paper that they are going to build this thing. We, I've been living there since 2008. When I came to that uh, place, I am just behind Marikar Park. The only separation is the main ro uh, the road, O12. I already have too much problems after 2008 when they built the park. First of all, the garbage that is keep on coming from the park flying up to my house because there is no other, uh, I mean, anything, <coughs> only the fence is there to stop it. Second thing is that it is a private road. It is not city road, it's private road. We are paying for it. Park and recreation, they are using it forever. Their heavy vehicles are keep on coming over there with the heavy materials. And uh, after 2008, they also built a small building, uh, I think for communication center or something like that, that is just in front of my house. And when these big vehicles comes, they not only destroy the street with their heavy equipments, but at the same time, they are bringing a lot of dust to all the neighborhood. <coughs> and uh, during the rainy season, the way they made it, the backside of the parking with the uh, lane, it is in an inclination, inclination going towards the houses. So whenever there is a, uh, a rain or something, there is no such gutters or uh, way for the water to go away and they keep on moving over the houses and i think sir sorry. i've got uh, i made notes of um your concerns and uh the next person please thank you 
Hi, Diana Wallace Hom. I am a member of Shadow Acres, an unincorporated area encompassing 20th to 30th of 012. All homeowners were not notified in accordance to the city code or law. We own our 012 street. The city of Palmdale does not. We are unincorporated. We are on a well and septic tank. No professional survey has been on the land. However, encroachment is upon the properties. We've tried to get help with protection during events of the 4th of July. On concerts, security cameras are not at Marie Car Park. Mosquitoes and other water ditches are full of mosquitoes. Garbage parties and rude parties for uh, the citizens of Palmdale are coming into our area of the unincorporated area. Emails are ignored during events like the 4th of July. Unsafe actions are actually occurring. House has caught on fire last south, south uh, 4th of July. The plan with the RV parking in the plan is on 012 is on actual the 012 side to Palmdale beautification because of the Beautification Act. This is unsafe for all un, uh, homeowners on 012. No cameras are at the park to catch criminals. M move in the RV parking next to the pump station, not on 012, which is going to cause this, because if it's on 012, it's gonna cause more issues of garbage, increase in theft and properties of our properties and our property values going down. You have water pumps going in, filtration system, which is not going underground, which has not been surveyed. The streets are impacted by heavy trucks, which you guys did not fix when you did the amphitheater. Shooters are already been doing at the skate park and basketball. It's in your police reports in Palmdale. Trash and threats of illegal going on is occurring at the skate park and on our street. And we have unsafe loitering and illegal fireworks and other un unruly activity. Infiltration stations is going in and we have no protection of the mosquitoes or any other protection by the city of Palmdale. Okay, Period. thank you. Nailed it. Good All right. Okay, next speaker. Uh, we have Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. So I'm here also representing uh, Shadow Acres community. I live there on the corner of 25 and right uh, behind this project. So I'm opposing to this project for several issues, including the crimes that are occurring on park and rights. And we have different police reports that uh, park and rights that are um, Pier Blossom Highway has park and ride. We have park and rides along Avenue S and also, you know, like three, four miles away from there. There are crimes happening and bringing this park and ride here will affect our safety of our community. I have children, I have elderly patients and so all the families here. So having park and ride can be moved and or expanded current park and rides that we already have. I don't see any need for this park and ride here. The place can be nicely asphalted for the expansion of the events, but it should not take uh, park and ride uh, designation. The second, that's a crime. Also for the RVs, we already have the events that happening that like two weeks ago, three RV cars were parked there and their generators were running whole night long. And it affects our children need to sleep the generators, and we were talking about 15 RV spots on that park and right place. That's another thing. The traffic also, so many uh, 1,280 car spaces on this park and right. Can you imagine in the morning and throughout the whole day night, this car's gonna go back and forth with carpools, with van pools. So what happens to our community there? That's another thing. The second issue, people who live on the other side of Rancho Vista, they were never notified. I have people knock the doors, they said we never received any notice of such projects. You're gonna put this a screen of movie screens, uh, it's gonna affect, uh, the project says once a month they're gonna put movie uh, uh, and 500 cars can see uh, how this movie goes. I think there would be many other projects under this uh, park and ride that city tries to uh, sleep on. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, any more speaker slips? Chair, I have uh, two more speaker slips and I'd like them to line up, please. We have La Lawrence, and then after Lawrence, we will have Carlos. Hi, everybody. Hey, can you put the screen up with the hop uh, when you show the satellite view? Is that possible? Is that, I'm asking too much? Is that possible? Uh, with the little park, the, the drawing you have? Yes. You had it, you had the satellite one. Okay, uh, are you okay with the I'm timer not so. being on? Are you, so you can yeah, see your we, time? 
Because oh, well, I was asking to put that up. up. But you, whatever. No, no, that's fine. I just yeah. wanted to make sure you were right. It'll ding. It start? Okay. It'll ding at his two minutes. Anyways, okay. Um, okay. Lawrence Larry. Okay, that's my house right there. 25th on the right. Would you see the house right there? My dream house. We built it 16, 17 years ago. Raised my kids there. Moved to Palmdale. Real my business out of here. We especially built, if you look at it, it's angled so you can see the mountain. The mountain is right there. Where you're proposing to put that project is right in our view. Okay, that's my house is worth $2 million. Okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to de decline the value of my house. Not to mention, in the last year, we had a shootout uh, right there. You guys are all aware of it. On 30, 30th, I heard 40, 40 rounds from my house. Um, with the park and ride, one question I have for you. Out of all, in the city of Palmdale, there's no park and rides in communities. Right. And you pick one of the most progressive communities to put a park and ride right in front of. So that literally, those lights are going to literally be in my bedroom window. Okay, that movie screen is going to literally be there. The, the, the concert is not as bad because we have that space. So that's like a buffer. But now you're, it's like you're encroaching. It's like you're, you're literally coming across. There's homeless people in the parks. I can't see my timer now. Can I see my timer again? Sorry. No, keep going. Anyways, there's, there's homeless people. Okay, I got a minute. Okay, there's homeless people. I, you can look at my records. I call the uh, city of Palmdale all the time to get homeless people, drug addicts out of the park. We keep our park clean. Um, we've been, um, I've been, I've been there for 17 years. We've been approached by developers, and that's really what's behind all of this, okay? We've been approached by developers. They, um, they've approached us with different schemes. They've lied, okay? They threatened to sue me, all kind of stuff, just to kind of throw smoke and mirrors. They're the ones that's in charge of that pump station, and that's what this is all about, if you, if, if you all want to be honest, okay? Um, and that right there is the whole thing. So that, our dream house, my family, three kids, two kids in college right now, my, my baby girl's going to be going to college. You guys are putting, like, our dream house, uh, right, this big, huge uh, parking ride right here. And everyone knows what's associated with parking rides. Okay, you have an open parking lot. You used to have security that went around the park every night. They used to have the little white car every night when I first moved there. Security's not there anymore. It came a little bit after the shootout, but it's not there anymore. So it's our safety, it's our safety that you're, you're jeopardizing. Thank okay, you. thank you, sir. Okay, what's your name, sir? My name is Carlos Gonzalez. I also live on O12. Um, I'm, I'm in agreement with my, co my neighbors here. We were never told about this. Uh, I just found out about two hours. I got out of work to come here and speak to you guys for these two minutes. I'll make it brief. Um, as it is right now, there's talking a lot of trash coming over when they have events. We don't have a problem. We do have a problem with it, but we, as a community, we pick up after ourselves, after other people do. There's a lot of dumping that goes on there. Lawrence, myself, we pick up our trash that other people leave and use our own vouchers to go dump that away. This project will only bring more trash because people will just continue to dump trash and find, be aware of that empty space that's there that you guys saw there. Parking rights, we have three that we just mentioned, less than five miles away. We got the one on Navin West, the one by Costco, the one on Parablossom. Why put this one in a community? I, I don't understand that. I didn't know what Lauren said about developers. That's something new, but if people want to park their car, I'm sure there's not a problem. There's enough parking already in the park. If they feel they, it's the same thing as creating a parking ride, or there's a lot of empty spaces during the day. The park gets filled in the evenings or when there's concerts. Mm. Oh, I've been, uh, when these concerts are going on, again, I'm, I'm okay with the concerts for the community, but when there's concerts, that traffic jam, it's really bad. That's just an example when there's a concert every other month in their summer, every other week. When, if they put a, put, put a parking ride, it's just going to increase the traffic. It's unsafe. I almost got run over a couple of times while walking on my horse there. It, it, it wasn't meant for a, a situation like this. People don't care because they just come and they're going to leave after the concert. Park and ride, same thing. They're going to look for different an, a, avenues to avoid the traffic that they're, they're, that's being created. So parking is already there if they want to do park and ride. Plus, not to mention the one in Avenue or uh, Pearl Blossom. That's pretty much what I was able to bring up. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Okay, any more speaker slips? No. None. Okay, um, so applicant is the city. So this. Speaker slip? Is there a speaker slip? So there are speaker slips in the foyer. I don't know if you want to give her an opportunity to fill one out and let her speak. 
But you'll need to fill out a speaker slip maybe after you speak. First, tell us your, your name so that we can uh, record it, but then you'll need Absolutely. to fill out I'm a so speaker sorry. slip. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, C Christina Rivas. And I live directly right in front, <laughs> right there in O12. Um, so my house, Paris in Fire, so that's where I live, right, right, right across the street. Um, with that being said, I miss a lot of what everyone said here, but for the most part, I believe everybody um, talked about the, the traffic issues, um, but I have to go into the park and maintenance issues to talk about the berms are always broken. We have issues on O12 that the city does not want to adhere to. I have brought up a few, um, a few issues with um, the mayor's office, and um, they blatantly, blatantly disregarded years and years and years of this, this problem. So hearing about what they want to propose, I don't want to repeat anything everyone else said because I agree with everyone else in what, the, in what they're saying. It's just going to bring my property value down. But if my house is, home, <laughs> is, is um, under, um, it's going to be under construction soon, but um, more so I am more worried about just the blatant disregard that I've gotten with the city of Palmdale and how they're going to look out for us, especially when I've been told from the mayor's team that we are a county, we're in the un, uh, what we are the, um, we're part of LA County, right? We're unincorporated, right? So in their city, they're not going to look out for us. And this road, I guess this access road, right? Did you guys want? Did you guys want to? Um, or you want to do? Absolutely not. That's going to be right in front of my house. And as what um, someone else said too as well, um, there's no, there's, there, there's no one dealing with the traffic beyond um, 25th and 012. Whether it's concerts, whether it's, it doesn't matter what events are going on, so I can only imagine what that will look like. Right now, the city has no idea what they're doing with the homeless. And again, I think believe someone else had said that as well, so that's just going to bring just more and more and more, more issues that the city is going to turn around and do the same thing they've done to me for years and say, I can't help you. Your county, go look to county. When it's the city that's asking us as a resident saying, hey, can we do this in, you know, in a private? I want to keep it private. That's why I'm there. I want to keep it private. I don't want a freeway in front of my house. I bought that house 20 some odd years ago and I want to keep it that way. That's the purpose of it being unincorporated. So I want to keep it that way. Um, and, and again, the city has lots of room after 14. You can pick a lot of different, I mean, that would be more suitable. Thank, Thank you. you guys for letting me speak and I'll go ahead and fill out that, that slip. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now we're closing the public hearing. All right, the All public right. comment period has now closed. There you go. You can bring closed. up the applicant, which is the city. So oh. we do have a couple it's people here to answer. Right. <laughs> we, it's a capital okay. improvement project, applicant. so we do have our, our engineering team here. Come on up. Are we able to ask the engineering team any questions? The, the, um, they're going to answer the questions. All of the questions that you guys have asked, we're going to get answers from those questions now. Yeah, I'm here to receive questions. Okay, so number one, do the, well, do the people who are not City of Palmdale residences, do they get notification too if they're within a certain radius? City of Palmdale. City of Palmdale. Yes. We're city of, we get taxed as City of Palmdale. We're just an unincorporated. Hi, I'm going to have to ask the uh, audience to be quiet. I'm sorry, but when they're speaking, um, the public hearing is closed. No more talking. It is now back on the dais. They're going to ask the city engineer the, the questions, yeah. and uh, the, the meeting is going to proceed orderly and in the normal course of business. But the public comment period is now closed, and no more chit-chat. Thank you. So we can hear. Thank you. Okay, so um, although the neighbors that are City of Palmdale, Post Office, 93551 or whatever, but if they're not incorporated in the city of Palmdale, do they get the same notice? So I can go ahead and answer that. Okay. Yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. So, so it's, it's by owner occupant. So okay. it's, it's by radius and owner occupant. And they do it within a particular radius of mm. the project, Heard correct? About 700 feet around radius. So 700 feet around the project. Okay. Um, now, did you make notes by any chance of the people's questions? Um, no. Okay. Mosquitoes. What do we know about mosquitoes? Are we having mosquito issues over here? Is it going to make new mosquito issues? And do we have them now? Or are they going to be mitigated? That's not something I have a, an answer to. Yeah, the uh, basin is just what every other park has. It's uh, designed to collect the storm water from the area. So I don't think it's going to go collect mosquitoes because it's going to go to the main storm drain. Okay. Just a collecting pit. 
And then do we have surveillance cameras in the park for security? There will be. In the okay, design. so this will, will add yeah, there will new be surveillance cameras. Yes. Um, okay, let's see. Water pump, um, traffic, air pollution. Is this going to generate new air pollution? We have a e AQMD report on this thing or something yes, like that? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, and what does it say about air pollution? So the air pollution during construction, they will have to adhere to AVQMD uh, dust Compliance. control and dust mitigation. Um, I do want to point out that this parking ride will also majority ma majority of the time serve as overflow parking for the park. So this is uh, something that is a big need for the park and these events that are held and tournaments and things of that nature. So it would actually make it better because the site would be improved versus now what we have is um, just dirt and people watering with dust mitigation out there. So this would improve that situation. That, okay. that was my question because this area is already used highly with the amphitheater things, right? So with it having dust and things there when they do the overflow parking, having it now newly paved, it would help with that dust, correct? Correct. Okay. And then my other concern is, is I hear you say that it'll, there'll be surveillance cameras, but will they be um, security driving around like some of the other uh, park and rides have? Or will it just be the surveillance cameras? Surveillance cameras are there, but like other parks, we are providing securities. So they'll have like someone driving parks. around? Correct. So that'll help with the crime Correct. and the safety? Correct. Okay. Is this 24-hour security? Or is it going to be regular business hours? Of it's going to be business hours and evenings. Okay. Yeah, criminals, uh, yeah. sir, sir. sir, we have to um, keep the quiet. Okay. Keep quiet. We're, we're talking to staff now. Okay, uh, movie screens. Um, are these going to be something that's going to uh, disrupt the, the uh, neighbors? So whenever there is a, an opportunity to install the movie screens, and it would be a projector, if I'm correct, right, Kevin? Correct. Uh, so it would be on a projector. And when this does come to fruition, it is going through a minor use permit. So it wouldn't come back to a public hearing, but we would condition the project to comply with noise, traffic, lighting, um, and be considerate of all the neighbors in the area. And the audio is not in the park. The audio is in the cars. Correct. It'd be a drive-in oh, movie theater. It's so a drive-in, the but the audio be, will be yeah. in your cars. Oh, like old-school drive-ins? Old-school drive-ins. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I was going to ask clarification for that, because I know that they currently already have movies in the park at the amphitheater. So this will be an outside drive-in in the drive -in parking park. that you're building. Correct. Now, will they have... Because I'm old school, I'm born and raised here, so we ha we used to have drive-ins out here. So will they have the actual, um, what do they call it, on the side of your car where you can hear the music? Or would it be like one of the radio ones? No, no, there uh, audios in their, in their car. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So then they won't they have that. They connect to good. the channel. Okay. Where they're given a channel to connect, and that's going to be listening inside the car. Got it. Okay. Okay, then um, there was some discussion about... 15 RV parking spots and generators running at night. Um, are that there going to be generators RVs and RVs running at night? It might it be, but I'm not sure exactly. I can't so then in, are there rules for I RVs can that they can't run? Condition. So I'm not sure where the RVs and generators at night came in because we do have... Um, we, right, we do have plugins. However, we do have overnight stay rules, so... Um, if you've noticed, our code enforcement is pretty active with street cleaning and street parking. So any vehicle that's been left, I think, for over 72 hours will be t ticketed and, and um, towed. So okay. that's something that our code yes. enforcement team is after. Code enforcement. Okay. And this won't be a campsite. So that's, I want to make that clear. So the RVs are just to come to the event and leave? Correct. Okay. Got so it. it's not for... Overnight. Not for stay. Oh, yeah, oh, for, not yeah, overnight. for an extended not stay. Overnight stay. No. Okay. Okay. So, okay. You know, if a car is parked over it, we're not supposed to be closely I'm sorry. monitored by our court enforcer. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay. The water pumps. Is the water pump going to generate mosquitoes? Question. Can you clarify what the pump station is for me? So the pump station is to generate water. So that would, uh, we, as you know, we do have a water issue in the in the valley. So this is a way that will get uh, water filtrated to other projects throughout the city. Mm. Okay. 
Okay. All right, commissioners. Any more questions? Um, any? Do you guys make? Uh, have yeah, we... I have a question. There was some um, concerns regarding traffic. Um, how do you feel like you guys will, you know, mitigate traffic or make traffic better? Um, I'm assuming there's not going to be events all the time, um, and I know there's already events because I'm active at all of those events. Um, so I know there's already traffic, but now that it's a paved thing and it's going to be, you know, more things. How would you say that it would improve or not improve? The, uh, the paving improves and controls dust and everything else. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of traffic capacity on Rancho Vista Boulevard, and the park and ride are, is not heavy traffic like for an event. So it, it's a few cars coming in and out at a time. So we don't see that as a significant issue. You guys, please be respectful. We were li we were listening to everything that you said. We were quiet. We're trying to ask these questions for you. I understand, but we're trying to ask these questions for you. So we're here to help you. Okay. So I'm sorry. There, go ahead. Go ahead with the. So we do, we don't see any significant traffic issues associated with the parking right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Got air pollution, mosquitoes. Surveillance cameras, security. They, they were talking about uh, there used to be a car that drove around the park. Uh, did there used to be a car, and will there be a, par a car? I mean a secu you mean a security, security, car? security, a security. She, she answered yeah, she that. said that. She yeah. answered that. Okay, gotcha. I have um, one more question. Um, someone thought of this to bring their property value down. Do you believe that it'll bring it down, or do you believe that it'll bring it up? I believe it will bring it up. I live in the area. Okay. I'm a resident of that. So. So our property value goes up. Okay. Because it is something new, and usually parks and schools and things like that do bring value up, correct? Yeah, because that will be, a, that will be an improvement in the lighting. Got it. The lighting will be improved, and okay. also the lighting in the park, we, it will be, there is a, a control on that, mm -hmm. that if there's a movie, the light will be off. Got it. There will be a, a control switch on that. Thank you. Okay, commissioners. Uh -oh. Questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many um, how many stalls are we looking at? How many parking stalls are we looking at here? There will be a 1,200 parking. 1,200 parking? Which, and is, which is currently being used as the same quantity. Oh, same same quantity. Um, yeah, but events. just a dirt road. And like, um, like for events, are these events going on like during the weekend, once a month or something like yes. that? Yes. Like I said, I live in the area, so the, if it is event, uh -huh. if there's an event, it's always full in the dirt parking. Okay. Because the existing one cannot con cannot accommodate the customers or the clients. Okay. Or do we have like like traffic control out there, or do we have um, um, lights, or I mean, excuse me, uh, traffic signals? Big signals, yes. There do is. you have traffic signals yeah. out there? Okay. And how about uh, during events? Is there like uh, traffic control out there to help with the flow of traffic? I saw some traffic. traffic control people there during events. To help with the flow of the trip. To like right now, even the even the area is not improved. There are traffic controls during event, at least in the morning before the event. Morning before the event. Yeah. And, and and usually, what time are these events happening? I mean, obviously, it's you know. It's after I'll after, after in, six. I'll after six. Chime dark. In. I'll go ahead and chime in. These these events happen now currently, so mm. this is not, That's not uh, the only new events that would be this happening. Is, is maybe the like I said, the outdoor movie theater at some point, the okay. drive-in. So this would assist with the current traffic issues and the current. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that we've all been here to an amphitheater event, and mm -hmm. you know our parks and rec team is out there directing people where to park, making sure that they're not double parking, and making sure that we're using you know efficient space and and whatnot. Okay. I have two more questions, I'm sorry. Um, one is I'm hearing a lot about the incorporate, uh, incorporated area, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that's after 012. Um, so is Marie Kerr and this parking area owned by the city? Correct. Okay. So everything outside of that would be unincorporated? Uh, north or just of the, past? Just past 012. 012, got it. Okay, and then last question. Have you guys already thought of where you're going to put the... Um, if you do have the drive-in theater, like where that will be, like will it be in an area where it's not distracting to the residents or like where are they planning to put it? The movie theater screen is going to be between the old, the old, the existing park and the new park. It's the uh, uh, northwest, I mean, southwest, southwest of, the, the, of the site. Okay. Southwest of the site. 
Okay, it's on the map. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okie dokie. Um, okay, any further discussion from commissioners? No. no. Okay, I'll close the public hearing. I already did that, never mind. Uh, commissioners, can I get a motion and or a second? A motion. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Jones. I have a second. Second. Second from Commissioner Oliveras. Please show your votes. Let the record show we have three yes votes, uh, which motion passes and one abstain. Um, please know that if you're ever unhappy with the vote at the Planning Commission, it can always be appealed to the City Council. Mm -hmm. You can go to the City Council and can, you know, uh, pr present your objection, and you have a whole, it starts all over again. Yeah. And all to right. add to that, there are 10 days to file the appeal with the City. There is a fee associated with that, so just keep that in mind. So do you have the email with I can give you my card after this. Thank you. Okay, okay, we're moving, moving on to the next agenda. I'm Thank sorry. You. I'm sorry. Seven item item number seven non agenda public items. Um, now is the time for public participation in items that were not on the agenda. Do we have any speaker slips for non agenda items? We do not. Okay. Um, staff communications. Do we have any staff communications? We do not. All right. Commissioner reports, commission reports, announcements, requests for future agenda items. Any of those? Okay. Uh, all right. Then we are adjourned to the meeting of October 10th at 7 p.m.